How can you use Notion in your real estate business? So you've downloaded the app, created an account, sat down to use it and... Well, don't worry, I've been there too. In this video, we're gonna learn five easy ways to run a real estate business using Notion. Record meeting minutes, manage standard operating procedures, track real estate leads, run projects, and store contact info. For each one, you'll find out exactly how it works. So by the end of the video, you'll be a lot more confident using Notion. Plus, I'll also show you where you can download these templates. So keep on watching. If you've got any questions, drop them down into the comments below. But other than that, let's get into it. The first way to use Notion in your real estate business is to track your meeting notes. So as you can see here, I've got a meeting manager template that I've created. And here we can go and plan out our meetings using the calendar. We can create a new blank meeting or we can use various templates and buttons. So let me quickly show you how this works. So firstly, I can just go here on the left hand side and create a new blank meeting. It'll ask me if I want to add it and then we go and create a blank one. So let's just say that we're gonna have a uh, sales update. We can then go and select who's gonna go to it. So let's say it's myself uh, and my uh, virtual assistant, Marge. Uh, this is put it as provisional, so it's just um, planning at the moment, but I could change that to scheduled. Uh, the date and time, let's go and put it in for say next Thursday, uh, and we can say what type of meeting is it? So let's say it's gonna be a virtual meeting or online because Marge is in another country. Uh, Where's it gonna be? So let's just put Zoom. Uh, how often are we gonna have this? So let's say that this is part of a uh, weekly meeting. So I'm gonna put weekly. Uh, what department is it related to? So this is sales. Do I need to do any preparation? So let's say that yes, uh, I do. And then are there any additional notes? Once I've done that, if I then just go and click off, you can now see that in the calendar view here, we've got a sales update that's listed as provisional. And we can also see that I've got on the left hand, left hand side now, we've got the sales update has appeared. So you can see that in this meeting, I put preparation required, but it's not appeared on the left hand side here yet under preparation required. And that's because this is currently provisional. But if I go and change that and let's say, okay, we've now gone and agreed that meeting works for everybody. And if I change this to scheduled, you can now see on the left Left hand side that preparation is now required. So this is a bit like your to-do list. So we can create a new meeting, we can go and see what we've got upcoming, we, we can also see which meetings do we need to do preparation for, and there's also a view here for tracking past meetings over the last month. Now Notion is also great at saving you time, and one way that you can do that is by using templates. So if I go to the right hand side here under new, we've got this little drop down arrow, and you can see that I've got a team member one-to-one -one template. So if I jump into this with the three dots and go edit it it's already got a pre-agreed agenda in here so what were the highs and lows past months performance etc etc so rather than having to go and think of this each time you create a new meeting it will just go and populate this automatically it'll also go and fill in this field so it'll say that it's a monthly marketing meeting and that it's online so let me show you how to use this if we go here rather than clicking on new which will create a blank meeting note i can click the drop down and let's instead select here the template and you can see that it's now going and populating this whole bottom area and it's gone and brought the agenda through and all i need to do now is go and put in the name of the team member etc and you can create as many of those as you want so just go to the little drop down go to new template and then create whatever template you want so that's one way to save time another way is that you can go and use recurring meetings as well so if you know that you're going to have a one-to-one -one, uh, with a team member every week just select the little drop down then using the three dots you can set this to repeat how often do you want it to repeat what day and starting from when so that you don't have to manually create uh, these pages um, yourself notion is also great for going and collaborating with other people so we've got this sales update that's scheduled so in here we can start to go and type out our agenda so we could select some items so one uh, two three etc and then everyone else who's involved in that meeting can go and contribute they can drop in some maybe screenshots um, of some spreadsheets they could add some links um, some attachments etc so all the information gets put into one place stored together and then you can go and easily find it before the meeting during the meeting or indeed afterwards lastly a neat little trick is also being able to copy meetings if you use them on a regular basis so let's say that for this sales update it was going to be every week the same agenda rather than having to go and use the templates or any of that sort of stuff if i just go and click on it so if i hold down the alt key on my keyboard and then just drag it then creates a copy i can hold alt and drag it again so it's copying that so we've now got different instances of that same meeting so that's how to use notion to manage your meeting notes 
Next up is using Notion to manage your standard operating procedures or SOPs. So this is my SOP hub for real estate agents. And here we can create SOPs and draft them. We can then go and develop them, get them signed off and then put into use. We can go and manage them to make sure that they're reviewed on a regular basis. And we can also go and decide when they are to be archived or they're now out of date. So just to quickly show you around here, we can see at the top we've got our little summary or overview of how many um, SOPs we've got in each of the various stages. So we can see here SOPs that are in development. So here this test SOP uh, is currently for sign off. Uh, it's within the sourcing department and I'm the owner. And we can see these in various different views. So this one's a board view. So going through the various stages, which SOPs need to be signed off in various stages as well, which ones need to be reviewed, etc., etc. And we can also see all of the SOPs. And we can also see active ones. So if you quickly want to go and find an SOP that you need to use to go and carry out a task, um, then you can see it here on the active SOP uh, section of the dashboard. Then we've got other parts. So creating new SOPs. So here, what's in our inbox? So what do we need to go and then decide what to do with it? Uh, which SOPs are currently to do? So need to be written, drafted, uh, reviewed, signed off, etc. And then which ones are um, currently in uh, active use? We've also got here active uh, on a different page too. So we can see um, all of the various sections for active SOPs manage. So this is where we see any that need to be reviewed uh, within a certain time period and that's calculated automatically. So if I quickly show you here, if we go to new uh, SOP, if I went and said that the last review date, for example, was today, and let's say that we want to review this every 90 days, you can then see that Notion is automatically calculating the next review, review date is the 31st of July. So this is how you make sure that all of your SOPs are kept up to date, uh, that they're not becoming stale, and you can also go and make sure that all of your team members are using them correctly. Like I mentioned in step one, we've also got all of these templates. So for for example, if I say we've got a new sourcing SOP, uh, this is all um, formulated so that you just need to go and fill in all the bits. So we've got our contents at the top, then we've got each of the different sections, uh, roles and responsibilities, any abbreviations. And one of the flexible things about Notion as well is that you can put in different types of um, content. So here we could just go and put in the steps in written form. We could also go and use a diagram, perhaps a, a whimsical board, or we could go and put in a, a picture of the process. We could create a checklist with check boxes and we could even embed a video maybe on YouTube or Loom. So no matter how you want to go and show how to carry out the SOP, Notion is really flexible in terms of dealing with that specific method. So that's the template. So there's a new S sourcing SOP and then we've also got our admin section as well. So this is about how to go and double check that SOPs uh, are being archived in good time. So SOPs are really important. So this is how you can start working on your business rather than in it by delegating to other people. Sorry to interrupt. If you're finding this video useful, would you mind hitting the like button down below? It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Oh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. If you think these templates would help in your real estate business, what I'll do is I'll drop the link to them down into the description below so that you can download them. But anyway, back to the video. Notion is a great way to track your real estate leads. So those properties that you've come across and now need to go and follow up. So here again, I'm in Notion. And if I go to add property lead, uh, you can see that we can easily add new properties into this page. So I've created one already just as an example. So if I open this one, we can see that we've given it a name. We can see its address, the county, the postcode, etc. If there's an online URL where there's a listing, uh, how much is it on for? Where did it come from? Uh, what's the current status? So this is in an initial review. Um, the sales status, what condition is the property in, uh, the property type, so this is a terraced house, three beds. We can see when we next want to follow up, so in a week's time, and we can also put in the estate agent. And this is a relation, so it's related to a different database. And we can see here that I could add, if it's on, for, on with multiple agents, we could select another agent as well. Also, have we had any viewings? We could go and book in viewings, etc., etc. And then underneath, we've got all of the information on the property. So what's the deal summary? So any notes that we've made? What's the communication history that we've had with the estate agent? So here, you can go and add all of the information that you need to about this specific property. But it's even more powerful than that, because then we can start going and looking at our pipeline. So if I go back to the property leads page, here we can go and see our deal pipeline. So here we've got all of the different stages. So what's a new property? Uh, which ones are in the initial review? So there's the one that we just looked at. Ones that need to book viewing. Ones where the viewing is booked but we've not done it yet. Offer made, etc, etc. 
And here, you can quickly jump into them, you can go and amend them, so maybe the price has come down on this one and we need to change that to 180, uh, for example. Uh, we can go and keep on top of all of our pipeline and move them through as we're going and tracking them. So this is a great way to go and manage our properties. If I go back again, we can also see which properties need to be followed up. So here we've got our calendar, and you'll see that the test property that I just created in a week's time, we can quickly go into our calendar and we can phone the agent or go and speak to the owner, etc., to go and see what's happening with their sale. And we can also go back and see any properties um, where we've made offers. The offers may not have been accepted. And then we can go back round and go and chase those up. To manage your pipeline is really, really important. And Notion using their calendar, their board, and their table view makes that really, really easy. Fourth on our list is using Notion to manage your real estate projects. Now, this is a Gantt chart for an example refurbishment project. And as you can see, we've broken it down into the very big stages. So building the foundation, the walls, the roof, etc. And this Gantt view in Notion is really useful for tracking the progress of your project, but also for tracking different elements in terms of fixtures and fittings, pictures, inspiration, etc. Now you can see here that the first two sections of this imaginary project have gone fine. So the foundations and the walls, those are both completed, but adding the roof is still in progress. And we're currently here at the beginning of May. So this is where we can go and manage our timeline by easily going and extending out some dates. And you can see that uh, our internal first fix uh, is actually uh, not in progress. That's not started yet. And we can then start going and moving things to reflect the delay in the timeline. So in terms of managing projects, this makes it really, really easy for keeping things on track or going and shifting around your schedule. And like everything in Notion databases, you can go and open each of these items to add more information. So let's say, for example, that on the painting and decorating, we were starting to get some ideas about the design choices we wanted to make. We can just go and open this and then we could go and put different rooms. So we could put, for example, the bedrooms, uh, we could put in here the lounge, then we could go online, we could go and capture some pictures, we could copy and paste them into here just to give some inspiration. If we wanted to go and write down the number of litres that we needed, we could speak to the builder and then put how many litres, so it could be 25 litres of um, white. Um, paint, etc, etc. So you can go and store all of your information in one place for each of these different sections and these can be as elaborate as you want. You could have dozens, hundreds of line items to break down a really complicated project. But Notion, by being able to copy and paste information into each of these lines, uh, by being able to build out um, calendar views, your Gantt chart view, uh, your board view, um, it makes it really easy to project manage your projects to go and make sure that they stay on track and that all of your information is stored in one place. Plus, don't forget that you can also work with other people. So if you've got people who are doing some research for you, they can go and add information into here so that you all collaborate and share together. Maybe you want to, if you've got a very adventurous builder, you could also share this with your builder and they could go and access all the information. Um, so Notion, it's really, really powerful. And this functionality comes as part of their, their free plan. So unlike other tools, you can make the most of this and it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg to use these different um, ways of using Notion. The last way we're going to look at today is using Notion as a CRM or customer relationship management software. So this is the Estate Agent Connect Pro. So this is a template that allows you to stay in touch with estate agents to make sure you build those relationships, keep track of your conversations and really build that rapport so that you get some great deals out of them. So on the dashboard, you can see that first up, we've just got the basic contact card information for some example estate agents. So we've got Joe Bloggs, uh, Paul Potts, etc. And if I open this contact card, you can see here that we've stored all the usual information. So um, what's their phone number? What's the email address? You can actually rate them. So here we've got Paul as three stars, so he's the best. Uh, we can also see when did we last contact him? So December the 11th, etc., etc. We can also look at them in different ways. So here, the contact cards, you can easily jump to their information straight away. Uh, we can also see them in a table view. And the last way here is we've got the agents broken down by their agencies. So here we've got ABC Real Estate Co as the agency, and there are a couple of agents underneath. So that's the contacts. Then underneath, we've got follow-ups. And this is where it's really powerful at building rapport. So if you regularly speak to the agents, um, you can make sure that you're checking in with them, make sure that you're front of mind and that they're bringing you really, really amazing deals. So here on the left-hand side, we've got an overdue section. So this is where we've spoken to somebody. Um, for example, here we last spoke to Tina on the 3rd of April. We want to follow up every 28 days. So you can see that the follow-up is the 1st of May here. Now it's 
currently the second. So this is telling us that we're now overdue with our follow-up with Tina. So it's all about putting systems in place that then surfaces the information to you so that you don't have to think, you don't have to think, oh, when did I last speak to her? Do I need to speak to her again? Um, Notion does this for you just by setting it up in the right way. And we've got the same with a couple of other people. We've also got this with a, a diary. So you can see that that's just a list of overdues, whereas here, this is a calendar view for this week. And if I look at this month, we can see that Sarah and Tina were supposed to be this week. And then coming up next week is Michael. We've also got uh, important dates. So another way to build the rapport is to try and subtly find out some important dates for the estate agents that you work with. So maybe their birthday, maybe it's an anniversary when you first spoke to them, for example. And you can again, store that in Notion under the important date section. Like here, we've got the 3rd of May, and then you've got that it's a birthday. And when you come into the calendar, we can quickly see what are the important dates. So you can just go and give them a little email, maybe even buy them a little bottle of bubbly or a cake. And it's again, all about reinforcing your presence and getting them to bring you the business that you need. Here, we've also got other views. So you can see the agents, for example, the agencies, um, etc. But again, Notion with its powerful database functionality, related databases, all of the different types of information that you can store in those databases, including pictures, links, videos, diagrams, checklists, etc, etc. What makes Notion very flexible, but also really powerful and it can bring a massive amount of benefit to your real estate business so it's definitely worth checking out so you know what notion can be used for in your real estate business but how do you start well the best way is to experiment i've actually created a video here that shows you how to create a really simple address book in under 15 minutes so if that's something that you would find useful do make sure you go and check out that video